Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. So you can hear me. All right. Shall we wait for a couple of minutes? Or shall we just start off? Somebody give me Okay, yes. I think uh, we'll start. Okay, let people come as and when they are free and feeling up to it. Okay, so uh, yesterday I was talking to you about cosmologies and I was trying to tell you that uh, as far as the definition of religion goes, it is only um, okay, there are only um, yeah. There are only three religions, which I told you are Judaism, uh, Christianity, and Islam. And uh, I also told you that uh, um, we have this uh, uh, thing of what we call Hinduism today was a coinage of Raja Ram on Roy. <clears throat> and it's actually a cosmology and a philosophical system. And I was talking to you about it originally being referred to as Sanatana Dharma system. Okay, and uh, I also told you that the other uh, uh, ancient uh, Indian cosmologies were Jainism and uh, Buddhism. Um, both of which, <clears throat> both of which were, uh, uh, what should I say? Um, the both of which also are cosmologies, but uh, they are slightly. Yeah, they are uh, slightly different from uh, each other, these cosmologies, but that's not what we're going to be discussing uh, today. Um, yesterday when we ended, uh, I was talking to you about uh, these words, which will be And I somehow have a feeling this is not the best thing in the world to try out. Okay. I think I'll go back to typing. This doesn't seem such a wonderful thing. It looks terrible. It's like a small child. All right. So, 
so these are the words and all these three words put together actually means spirit okay and this is the spirit that permeates the universe all right so we have all wrong depictions in fact uh, if you are familiar with the bhagavad gita uh the bhagavad gita uh, there is a this thing that uh, krishna showed his vishwarupa to uh arjuna so typically if you see an ntr film nt ramarao film then he grows into some 300 feet tall and 800 feet wide okay uh so you look at something like that and uh, that um uh, is supposed to be the vishwarupa that is not the vishwarupa the vishwarupa is that he reveals that he is the universe that he is the cosmos okay and cosmos like i told you is purposive so let me just give you one example uh, i had once gone to meet some doctor i didn't go to him to meet uh, him in his capacity as a doctor but uh, it was for some other reason and uh, this man was apparent uh, despite being a, a medical professional he was uh, very spiritual at heart and uh, he said uh, see uh, have you gone to your neighbors houses and uh, i said uh, no i have never been into my neighbors houses uh and he said you didn't go into your neighbors houses but yet circumstances brought you to me to meet me uh and this he said is divine cosmos and i thought that was a pretty good example yes we go and meet people somewhere and we don't meet people who are uh, our neighbors we don't even talk to them uh so it means that there for uh, as per this man's uh interpretation it is that there is a reason why you are doing it and even if you are not aware of the reason why this is being this is happening it does not mean that it is meaningless you may be aware you may not be aware but what you must understand is the fact that all these things all these things are okay dharma doesn't stand on its own dharma doesn't stand on its own without karma okay and it is it is the fact that there is dharma and it is up to the individual to have what the sanskrit word 
which is now a part of so many languages. It is Vichakshana. Vichakshana would basically mean that you should have the ability to decide how to act, what act would cause righteousness and what will not cause righteousness. So there are two texts that are called the Gita. Actually, there are three, I am told. I have to find out the name of the third Gita. Uh, the first Gita is not the Srimad Bhagavad Gita uh, as we know it. That is the second Gita. And this is during the Mahabharata when uh, Krishna is actually uh, talking to uh, to Arjuna, uh, telling him about dharma and all that. There is a, another Gita, which was uh, a sermon of sorts given by sage Ashtavakra. Ashtavakra um, basically um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, Ashtavakra was speaking to King Janaka, who is the father of Sita, and reminding him what dharma is and uh, how it is up to him to decide what dharma is. So you see, your karma is determined by your dharma. If you behave dharmically, if your soul has the capability, the soul, please remember this, the Atman, if it has the capability to understand and act in situations in a dharmic manner, then that soul gets refined with each birth, with each birth, but it can also go backwards if you somehow uh, don't keep up that refinement. Then you are born as lower forms of life. The human life is the highest form of life. It is from this that one will go. And uh, if you have led a very dharmic life, then you have this leading to Nirvana, which is breaking of the cycle of life, death, and life. So that comes to an end, depending on what you subscribe to, there will be a different definition of how Nirvana is attained. Advaita of Shankaracharya, Adi Shankaracharya is one way in that you are, you just go and become one with the Brahman. Uh, in Visishta Advaita, which is clarified monism in uh, English, uh, there you will find that you are going into um, you know, as an Atman, you are different, but when the time comes, when the Atman is completely refined and ready to become one with the Brahman, then it changes its uh, substance and becomes the Brahman. If you, this is what is Visishtadvaita of Ramanujacharya, and if you are Madhvacharya, you will believe in Dvaita, where he doesn't, he doesn't actually use the word Brahman. He uses the Paramatman as the uh, spirit that uh, 
you know, permeates the universe. And he says the Atman, the substance of the Atman is different uh, from that of the Paramatman. The Atman can never become one with the Paramatman. The Paramatman is that which stays different. Okay, it is something that can break the life of uh, cycle of life and death and life again, but it will not become one with Paramatman. He says this will rest at the feet, the metaphorical feet of the Paramatman. That is what Dvaita talks about. Okay, and this is a very small uh, group of philosophers who accept this. Uh, it is actually limited to Karnataka. And if you find uh, people who subscribe to Madhva's philosophy, uh, these are people who have migrated out of Karnataka, uh, the present day Karnataka. Uh, and uh, But you find that there are a number of Shaivites who do follow uh, Shankaracharya and a big number of Vaishnavites who follow uh, the Ramanujacharya kind of philosophy. Though technically speaking, Ramanuja's uh, philosophy is that which is called Sri Vaishnavite philosophy. But even the other Vaishnavites are not very different. I'm not going to go into those. So here is where I'm going to put an end to the discussion of the idea of a cosmology as we have seen it in the case of India. Okay. And I told you yesterday, this is not a chauvinistic statement, uh, but I do believe that we are uh, actually uh, we are actually a very very evolved cosmology, not just a Sanatana Dharma. Uh, and please don't conflate the caste system into it. The caste system didn't exist. If you read the Rig Veda, uh, you will find that it says that it is possible for one family to have four varnas in it. Okay, so the caste, and there was no panchama varna, which is the uh, uh, fifth varna or the untouchable. Okay, and we have a very wrong impression of the varna system. It, we see the uh, Brahman as a priest, we see the Kshatriya as a king. We see the Vaishya as a trader. And we see the Shudra as a laborer. Okay. That is a very Western uh, influenced uh, way of looking at it because of the usage of caste. You know, caste is something which is, doesn't, is not even an English word. It is a word which came from Portuguese. And it only means a closed group into which you cannot enter. Okay, now endogamy came later and it is your birth which determines your caste uh, is something that came much later. And that is when it became a jati system. It is the, you know, the uh, influence of the Brahminical thinking which led to this perversion of the original Varna system. Now, even the original Varna system, incidentally, uh, so let just, I thought I should, uh, shouldn't go on, but I will, because then it'll give you a clear idea of what a cosmology is. If you look at the Varna system, the Varna system is also determined by birth, but it is not determined by parentage. Please remember that. Okay, it is not determined by whom you are born to. A 
A Brahman can be born to a Shudra father. Uh, and Varna, very funnily, was usually applied only to the males. Okay. And you could uh, be a Shudra born to a Brahman father. And like I said, these are not Kshatriya is equal to king. It isn't. Okay. A Brahman is somebody who is capable of becoming a learned man or a scholar. A Kshatriya is somebody who is capable of being influenced. I'm sorry, who is capable of being brave. Okay. And in that sense, he can become a warrior. Okay, he can become a warrior, not a king. All right. And if you look at a Vaishya, a Vaishya is one who has the acumen for conducting business, not trade. Trade is very different from conducting a business. Okay, and the Shudra is not a laborer, but an agriculturist. A Shudra is an agriculturist, not a laborer. Please remember this. The Panchama Varna, like I said, came later on. That actually is not a Varna at all. It is a Panchama Jati that came in after the um, intervention of the Brahmins into the thing. Uh, into the Varna system and making it by parentage. So if these people were not determined as so-and-so by their parentage, who determines these people as being whatever they are? For that, the answer is... horoscope okay um, which horoscope is also called kundali janam kundali in hindi and uh, i don't know what it's called in telugu okay the horoscope what does the horoscope do it gives your planetary positions and the position of a, a, a star at the time of your birth. So typically, when you when somebody makes your natal chart, which is also called a horoscope, then you have these things of which lagna you were born. Okay. And at that lagna, which is the star which will govern your life? And when they draw the natal chart, the Janam Kundali, at that time, in that place, wherever you are born, okay, there, where is the, uh, which planet is in which house? And then they decide which is the planet that basically rules your life. If the planet Jupiter rules your life, for example, then you are... Uh, Maya, could you put the fan on? Yeah, thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, so if it is uh, Jupiter that uh, determines uh, your life, then you are a Brahmin. If Mars determines your life, Buddha, Guru, if it determines, then you are uh, Brahmin. Uh, and if you are 
فریشتا حقیقی پلیز اف یو آر انڈر دا یور مین پلانٹ دا ڈٹرمنس یور لائف از مارس اور بدھا دین یو ول ایکچولی بیکم اے کشتریا I don't remember the other uh, things. I don't know this whole natal chart thing. I've just only started learning this, by the way, uh, because my specialization actually is Western political thought. But I've just started learning this to try and understand and contrast things. And also because there are so many misunderstandings regarding ancient India. Uh, there's so much of... Uh, so much of scholarship is informed purely by Ambedkar's uh, scholarship, which has its value, but it's also not the last word in, uh, uh, in, uh, in understanding uh, ancient India. In fact, Gandhi has a better understanding of ancient India, Mahatma Gandhi, not the other Gandhis. So he has a much better understanding of ancient India than Ambedkar does. Uh, and uh, it's unfortunate that he's called a casteist today and he's called all kinds of names, but I won't go into that. Uh, so it's a natal chart and I forget what are the planets that uh, influence, um, you know, the, and it's not just these four things If you are under the influence of uh, Shukra, then you have the capability of uh, Niti, okay? Because there is a thing called Shukra Niti. So if that is the planet that influences you, then you have that. Anyway, so this is a cosmology. Stars, planets, how is somebody able to tell you know a lot of people have seen apparently my uh, natal horoscope a natal chart and have described me they have never seen me before and their descriptions are pretty accurate okay but uh, their predictions are not and that is probably because people have lost the ability uh, to read the natal charts properly so you can't say that something is astrology by the way is not an is not alchemy and astronomy is not an improvement over astrology they are two different things astrology and astronomy are two completely different things okay astrology is something that is more Uh, to do only with the Indian cosmology, the ancient Indian cosmology, okay? Uh, it has nothing to do with being an alchemy. It is, in its own way, it's a science. It is a science in its own way, uh, especially if you take the Greek uh, idea that science and philosophy are not different. They are the same. Okay, uh, it's only in the 19th century, thanks to Auguste Comte, that uh, the distinction between philosophy and science happened. So I gave you this example of a horoscope just to tell you how a cosmology works, who you are and everything is determined, not just by yourself, and certainly not by your parentage, but by the cosmic positions of various astral bodies, which determines what you are, your Varna, okay? And one last point about this, and that last point is today, everybody is talking about Vastu. And people will buy pl uh, flats which are uh, advertised as being as per Vastu. Okay, now that is the biggest load of nonsense that you can hear. 
okay uh, where the way in which we live now is something which is a clear indication that uh, we don't live as per vastu because the first principle of vastu is houses are not to be constructed in a row okay and then there are certain general rules of vastu which will tell you you have to construct houses as per the direction in which the wind blows and things like that and there are specific principles that are uh, that are applicable to a construction of a house it again the important variable there is this the horoscope the horoscope of the person in whose name the house is being built that will determine the internal this things of the house okay the internal uh, uh, arrangement of rooms of the house so that is what you have to understand and uh, i it also extends into music if you listen to either carnatic classical or hindustani classical once a concert starts there is a shruti being played and this shruti will not stop until the concert is over even in between songs previously somebody used to play the shruti uh, but nowadays people just put a shruti box on okay uh, but the cosmology does not tolerate silence that is the important thing that i wanted to convey to you the cosmology is something which is always not silent i'm not saying it's noisy but cosmology does not tolerate silence that's why once the concert begins the audience has to keep quiet but the shruti will not stop uh fresh ta hakiki fresh ta hakiki can you please mute your phone or whatever you are using fresh ta hakiki please fresh ta hakiki i think people are just putting on the thing here and going off i just must be talking to the screen here freshta hakiki could you please mute she is obviously not listening to there she goes again freshta hakiki please mute okay so having explained that ancient philosophy even in india is a cosmology na 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 miss na laptop no mai well i muted her i forgot that i can do it yeah so right uh <clears throat> so is are others there somebody answer yes sir yes sir yes sir uh, okay okay i don't know because when you don't see anyone and when freshta hakiki refuses to listen to you all right okay um anyway so 
most ancient philosophies or all ancient philosophies are cosmologies that includes zoroastrianism zoroaster zoroaster actually or zarathustra was not a prophet okay and he was in fact the equivalent of the a guru like ramanujacharya or uh, shankaracharya or any of these people okay he was a guru and uh, um so it is not to be understood as a religion okay uh anyway now to go back to where we are supposed to go which is ancient greece we have to understand that ancient greece is also a okay it basically concerns itself does anybody know what this means logos means study who study study what studying political science is logos that i guess was akshay right yes sir yeah uh, in general it means symbols which represent something no that is logo which is the modern uh, form of uh, logos that is a logo which is symbolic yes you are right uh, you say a company has a logo yeah but logos is not that uh why don't you improve on this akshay needs a small improvement a very small improvement can you i can't sir okay logos is the study of universe okay and as is the case with all old civilizations again with the exception of hinduism uh, or rather sanatana dharma buddhism these are slightly different despite their being cosmologies you will find that the original uh, form of explanation and study were all based in mythologies see whether you look at cosmology or mythology logos is always coming there a part of that word okay today mythologies have acquired a negative meaning but back in the good old days of ancient greece there was no pejorative meaning attached 
to the idea of a mythology. Okay. Uh, modern idea of mythology, not a mythology uh, of myths. Okay. Uh, there are two people who have done works on myths and their construction in the modern period. And these people are two Frenchmen Have you heard of either of them? Anyone who has heard of them? No, sir. Cloud Levi Strauss and Roland Barth. That's how it is pronounced. Cloud Levi Strauss and Roland Barth. Uh, what we'll first pick up Cloud Levi Strauss. So I'll do, I'll do an exercise. How many of you see Telugu films? Come on, I'm sure somebody sees Telugu films. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, how many of you? I, I know. Who is Mahesh Babu? Yes, sir. We know him. Who is he? An actor. An actor. Who is his father? An actor. An actor, but what is his name? Yeah, Krishna. 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 What is his mother's name? Indira Devi. Hmm? Indira Devi. Vijay Nirmala. Vijay Nirmala. Indira Devi. I've been confounded, hmm? completely confounded. Uh, okay, so let me pick up another example because this example didn't work. It's not uh, Vijay Nirmala, it is Indira Devi. Okay, how many of you see Hindi films? How many of you know? Amitabh Bachchan. Um, yes, sir. Who is his father? Um, Harivan Shrai Bachchan. Who is his mother? 39. I don't know. You don't know. Yeah. See, look at the uh, look at the uh, the thing his mother's name is Teji Bachchan, by the way. But very few people know that. But it's not really applicable in his case. What Claude Levi Strauss says is that if you have a famous parent, then you pass off as the son of that parent. Okay. Uh, when people talk about Rajiv Gandhi, they talk about him as Indira Gandhi's son. How many of them, how many people actually talk about him as being Feroz Shah Gandhi's son? Nobody talks about that, right? So similarly, if you take about, talk about this whole Nandamuri clan, uh, junior NTR, who is his father? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. You know the mother? And Sunil is confounding me because if you know the mother, I'm finished. This example also won't work. <laughs> huh? No? Nobody knows the mother? Okay, I used to know, but I've forgotten. See, that's the way it is. NT Junior, NT Rama Rao, 
who is he he is not even the son of hari krishna he is the grandson of nt ramarao okay who is balakrishna balakrishna is the son of nt ramarao nobody says he is the son of basavatarakam nobody says that right so you pick up the famous parent and you draw your lineage from there you draw your lineage from there okay so you know the actor sumant in telugu anyone hello yes sir yes sir yeah who is he who is he who is he sumant um, the modern actor sumant i think he belongs to the nagarjuna family he belongs to the nagarjuna family grandson of akinen nageshwar grandson of akinen nageshwar rao absolutely right who is his father who is his mother ha huh? nobody knows or do you no no yeah that is our example that worked uh he is the grandson of akinen nageshwar rao he is he belongs to nagarjuna's family because he is nagarjuna's nephew okay nagarjuna's sister's son nobody knows nagarjuna's sister's name her name was satya his father's name was yarlagadda something i don't remember so we don't know so this is myths as far as cloud cloud levi strauss is concerned okay uh roland barth on the other hand gives a different kind of construction uh, a construction of mythologies for some strange reason roland barth was obsessed with this woman ever heard of her anyone who has heard of greta garbo no well greta garbo was a very very famous um uh, film star hollywood star of yester years and she was robed in by a number of she was used by not a number of a couple of actually but one which i can't remember i think it's moe uh she was used as a model and what was she doing in the ads in those days it was mainly newspapers and a bit of television ancient television so you find her sitting and drink you have those wine glasses those long ones and she's got that wine glass and she is drinking wine out of that and saying swirl this liquid in your mouth and just taste royalty okay that was a line i didn't make it up okay so this for roland barth 
is myth construction. He calls it myth construction because for him, wine is nothing but an alcohol or if you like an alcoholic beverage. Okay, there's nothing special about it. There are various alcoholic beverages made out of different uh, kinds of agricultural produce. Okay. Uh, you have wine made usually out of grapes, but it can also be made out of other fruit. You can have whiskey, which is usually made out of wheat, but you also have rice-based whiskies. You have beer, which is usually made out of barley. Uh, and... Uh, Brandy, I don't know what it's made of. I'm not an expert on these. Uh, but you have all these different drinks. And apparently, the most difficult drink to brew is a whiskey. Okay. Uh, because uh, for a whiskey to get its color, please remember alcohol has no color. Okay, so whiskey has to have that golden hue. So you have to put it in a in an oaken cask or a big barrel made out of oak. You have to put it in it for at least eight years. At least eight years uh, before it becomes, it gets the taste, the odor of that wood. Okay. And if you are a Scotsman, then you will, depending on where your whiskey brewery is, if it's a Highland whiskey, then it is on the moors, Scottish moors as they are called bordering the ocean so the if you leave it for 18 to 24 years okay then the whiskey also picks up the odor of the sea which is supposed to make it very special so off late single malt whiskies i'm told have become extremely fashionable but to come back to what I'm trying to say, Roland Barth says that the wine is the cheapest and the quickest of all alcohol beverages in terms of its the time and money spent. You can make wine within three days and that doesn't cost much. You can make wine at home. You can actually make wine at home. Okay. So he says this cheap, inexpensive drink is portrayed as the drink of the royalty by using Greta Gabo. Right. So he's talking about advertising. And when he is doing advertising, when he's talking about advertising, he says advertising is myth construction. Advertising is basically myth construction. Okay. The same thing you can say about jeans. When Lee jeans were launched in India, they were advertised as the genes that built America. Okay. No, I still didn't understand why they said it was the genes that built America. But you must understand that jeans or denim uh, trousers 
are actually cheap and that is why they were the clothes of the working class of laborers laborers wore jeans levi strauss that jeans is thanks to the americans they pronounce it as levi strauss okay they say levi strauss you must have heard of it as levi's right you might might have heard of it as levi's it's famous wrangler all these are nothing but laborers clothes but now it's a fashion accessory you do that through advertising and the idea that it built america is such a vague statement okay when you say it built america you could easily interpret that as it is responsible for making america this great nation okay so what you need to understand therefore is that myths are not over and today they have a pejorative meaning and by the way we call this paper political thought but in reality this paper should have been called political theory and there is nothing that political theory doesn't investigate okay there's nothing that political theory doesn't investigate roland barth claude levi strauss of course was not really a political theorist but he was a structuralist uh, and an anthropologist and structuralism shares its roots both with anthropology and with political theory or political philosophy if you like right so the all these subjects are part of the interrogation of various aspects of society and this is where you have if you just take the word theory or philosophy this is where you have the coming together of so many disciplines anthropology sociology uh uh political science economics structuralism says that knowledge is one but it is multifaceted and each of these disciplines that we study is one of the facets or faces of that multifaceted oneness that you find okay so let's back let's get back to having established that mythologies in the modern sense are slightly differently understood we go back to greek mythologies uh how many of you have heard of atlas 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 not charles atlas just atlas nobody have you ever heard of atlas we have heard so well, yeah what is atlas or maps maps have you not heard of atlas in greek mythology no sir okay then tell me how did uh, the book that contains maps got the name atlas come on okay 
they got the name atlas from this figure in greek mythology who is he he is carrying the earth according to greek mythology atlas is carrying the earth on his shoulders so if you've seen an atlas cycle the logo of that is a man who's actually carrying a globe that's not how it is because the greeks didn't know that the world was like this okay the greeks believed in the flatness of the world so greek mythologies have to be taken as the equivalent sorry the equivalence of a cosmology mythologies are a cosmology they have multiple gods any idea can you give me the name of one greek god anyone come on come on nobody has heard of a greek god have you heard of apollo anyone who's heard of apollo hello is there anybody out there Yes, yes sir that's right you heard about apollo okay yes. did you hear about yes or no if it is no 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 sir no this one yes sir who is he padma yes sir the gods are named after the planet i think jupiter mars in us is for jupiter those are roman gods oh, there are some commonalities but most of the planets are roman gods but who's how do you pronounce this z d u s i don't know if you people remember but suzuki motorcycles made a motorcycle called z uh, let me not okay let me give you the pronunciation they used to call it zeus it is not zeus the greek pronunciation of that is zeus it's zeus actually okay and he is the head of all head god and apollo is his eldest child and dionysius is his vagrant child okay apollo represents order 
and he represents uh what do we say he represents discipline whereas dionysius is exactly the opposite he's a wine drinker wine is apparently an ancient beverage he is a wine drinker his followers are all wine drinkers they roam the forests in the night okay so he was this bad son of zeus when you come to the roman gods in the roman gods pantheon also apollo appears apollo is the head god okay unlike the greeks for the romans apollo is the head god and dionysius has he also is there but has a different name his name is bacchus okay and bacchus is called the god of wine by the romans and they don't look down upon him as the greeks did on dionysius is the same person the same god rather i'm sorry okay now having established their multiple gods we also have to come to yet another point all these multiple gods no what have i done no uh if you look at these gods they are all anthropomorphic have you heard of this term akshay punit padma navanand hmm any of you sunil sunil is an expert on movies and movie stars right sunil sir nen telugu medium sir anduke english lo cheppaleku avutunna nenu em parvaledandi telugu lo cheppandi hmm nerchukovali the more okay. you speak see can you learn how to swim without getting into water you can't no doesn't matter if you make mistakes nobody will laugh and even if they laugh it's not your problem you learn the language okay. english is not our mother tongue don't worry okay okay you speak okay, you okay. Speak. this is to every one of you who thinks that i'm not good in english so i shouldn't speak no i always tell people you cannot learn swimming without getting into water you cannot learn cycling without getting onto a bicycle and falling a couple of times or many times right so it's a is not the language that we use on a regular basis so don't worry about that see anthropomorphic means one second please what have i done
okay? Anthropomorphic is looking like a human being. Even our gods have now become anthropomorphic. Originally, they were not. Later on, they have become anthropomorphic. The word is derived out of two words from Latin. Anthrop is man, as they used to call, but we'll be politically correct and say anthrop is a human being. Morphic comes from morphology. Does anyone know what morphology is? If you remember your school biology and all those things, you'll remember this Mor morphology. Okay, let me try something. Have you heard of anatomy? Yes, sir. What is anatomy? Study of human organs. Uh, anatomy is the inside of the body. Okay. You must understand that the skin is the largest uh, organ and it covers the body completely. So what lies inside is called anatomy. Morphology is the external characteristics of the body. Okay? How we look. That is morphology. When you say anthropomorphic, then you are saying that which has the looks or external characteristics of a human being. So Greek gods and Roman gods, if you've ever seen their sculptures, especially their Renaissance sculptures, they are incredibly handsome. Okay, they are very, very good looking, extremely handsome. And the Renaissance thinker, Alberti, actually said, God created the human being in his own image. He said a lot of other things after that. I'm not going to go into them. He says, God created human beings in his own image. And today people say, we create God in our own image. That is because we are restricted by our imagination. Okay. Uh, we might distort. We might say Vishnu has 10 hands. Uh, we might say that Ganesha has the head of an elephant. And uh, how many of you believe... Uh, how many heads did Ravana have? Anyone? Ten heads. Ten. How did you get this conclusion? Ten heads, sir. Hmm? What is the word for it in... Hindi, Telugu, there's one word for it. It's actually a Sanskrit word. Anyone? 
You don't know the Sanskrit equivalent? Dasha Kanta. Okay, that is the word used on Ravana. Dasha Kanta. What does Dasha Kanta mean? Not huh? ten heads. Ten heads. Kanta. Kanta is head. No, it's neck. Actually, neck. It's not even neck. It's actually your throat. Okay, not even your neck. It's the throat. Now, Ravana was called Dashakantha because he was an amazing musician and he could play the Veena and sing and he could sing in 10 different voices. That's why he was called Dashakantha. He didn't have 10 heads. Okay, like I said, Vishnu is just a spirit. But we say Vishnu has an anthropomorphic form. Same thing with Krishna, spirit, not a human being. Anyway, let me come back here. Anthropomorphic, these gods are all anthropomorphic. There are also goddesses in both the Roman and the Greek pantheon of gods, okay? There are also, uh, uh, I mean, goddesses. We'll talk about one of those goddesses very soon. Now, Marx, Karl Marx, you don't get startled by this sudden change of subject. I'm not changing the subject. Karl Marx once said uh, rather uh, correctly, I think. He said mythologies represent the childhood of the human race. That's what he says. Uh, probably true, but only to a certain extent. I don't want to take that argument too far. Okay, I'm not going to take that argument too far because not all mythologies are childlike. Okay, definitely our ancient Indian mythologies are not childlike. All right. And talking about ancient India, how many Vedas are there? Quickly, quickly. Four Vedas. Which is the Panchama Veda? Mahabharata. Why? Why not Ramayana? Why is Mahabharata the Panchama Veda? Hmm? Akshay is very well educated in ancient India. I'm impressed, Akshay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Not that you need an idiot like me to be impressed by you. Hmm? you I'm sure better people than me have appreciated you. Yeah. So, why is it called the Panchama Veda? Okay. Who wrote the Mahabharata? Vyasa. Mm -hmm. Veda Vyasa. Why is he called Veda Vyasa? Uh, because he had the knowledge of all the Vedas. Did he? Is that the reason? No, he was called Veda Vyasa 
because he organized what was there in verse form into different vedas he is the one who named them rigveda we say rigveda but it is rigveda then the yajurveda then the samaveda and the atharvana veda it is not atharveda please it is atharvana veda he organized them into these four vedas so that's why he was called veda vyasa and since he wrote the mahabharata he is supposed to have written dictated it to ganesha who wrote it uh he is called veda vyasa but what is his real name did you know that there are multiple vyasas anyone did you know that there are multiple vyasas okay i take the answer is no because nobody is saying anything okay vyasa sunil what is what is vyasamu in telugu telugu ha uh, sir hmm vyasamu means telugu sir ah uh, vyasam rasaru people will say ंग yeah so there were so many people who are called vyasas and the veda vyasa the veda vyasa who basically uh, wrote the mahabharata his name is krishna dvaipayana while we are at it what is draupadi's real name panchali panchali no that's not her name why is she called panchali draupadi she is called panchali because she comes from panchal yagna seni because she was born from the fire yagna seni again is like panchali you are right she is also called yagna seni okay because she was supposed to have taken her birth from by the way you have to write gna as j n and not g n please remember that yagna seni okay then we have uh draupadi why because she was the daughter of king drupada, drupada. Hmm? that is why but her real name is krishna 
okay her real name is krishna and the person we call krishna what is his real name or the god we call krishna yeah akshay vasudev krishna no not vasudev krishna his name is Govinda Shauri the application of the term krishna which i was talking to you at the beginning was because he said i am the cosmic spirit in this human body okay but his name as such is govinda shauri all right and if you are wondering why is lord venkateshwara called govinda i have no idea okay i have to investigate like i said i'm only still in the process of learning indian ancient indian thought uh because there is no modern indian thought uh, probably with the exception of gandhi uh nehru and ambedkar uh the other two are limited gandhi is the one who has a lot of originality uh we don't really have modern thought okay neither do we have medieval thought anyway so to come back to what i was talking about okay uh which is atlas carrying the earth on his shoulder so we talking about an anthropomorphic god system both among the romans and among the uh, greeks okay now if you are saying anthropomorphic is like looking like a human being and that atlas is carrying his this thing you had this being the mythology being questioned by one particular school of thinkers this particular school of thinkers is called Have you heard of this anyone say yes or no so that i can proceed no sir okay. no sir okay all right the milesian school is called that because the members of this came from the miletus polis the polis called miletus like i said we shouldn't be calling it a city state we have to use the greek equivalent and it is polis they came from miletus and that's why they are called the milesians now there are three milesians the first is thales okay it's not thales it is thales the second is an axiomander and the third is an axiomenes okay these are the three people who belong to the milesian school Thales is considered to be the first ever Greek philosopher Thales is considered to be the first ever um 
Greek philosopher. Okay. Anaximander. This is my observation. Most amazing and source for modern science. Okay? I will be teaching this to you in the next class. And when I start teaching this, you will understand why I am saying he is the source for modern science. Okay. And then you have Anaximenes. Anaximenes tilts precedes these two by some years. But Anaximander and Anaximenes were more or less uh, contemporaries, more or less. Anaximander was slightly older. And Anaximenes, I'm putting his this thing down here, is somebody who gave us the primitive theory of rare faction. You understand condensation and rarefaction, right? Say yes or no quickly. Hmm? Sorry, Puneet, Akshay, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. No, sir. You haven't heard of condensation? Condensation is when something becomes cold and Rarefaction, condensation is coming together of molecules. Rarefaction is, a condensation is coming of molecules or atoms, if you like. Rarefaction is their spreading. Okay, so those are the things that these were talked about, not for in this language. Please remember that. He didn't talk about this in this language, but that became the basis. And you'll see how much of modern science owes its origins to the Greeks. Apart from the Milesian school, I will also be doing these people Parmenides, Zeno, okay, maybe Heraclitus, maybe, I don't know if I'll do Heraclitus. He'll definitely be mentioned while we are talking about Anaximenes. And he will also be mentioned while we talk about Parmenides. Okay. Uh, ideally, one should also talk because we said uh, uh, we talked about atoms. Somebody who indicated a certain thing about atoms uh, is this. Okay, Xenophanes of Colophon. Okay, so he is considered to be a significant, 
this thing because he talked about the world being uh, consisting of the equivalent of atoms and that was later on picked up in the modern period by Leibniz, the German philosopher who said, uh, who talked about monadology, but I'm going to stop here. No Leibniz. Tomorrow we start with the Malaysian school. Okay, you have to go for your next class. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you again tomorrow. Thank you. Thank no, you. tomorrow is second Saturday. Yeah. So I'll see you on Monday. Obviously. Okay. I also need to get my uh, this thing. Uh, I also need to get my blood test done for COVID. Thank you. Okay. Right. Oh, see okay, you on sir, Monday. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Monday is when we'll see. Right. Thank you.